Hey everybody, Livingston here. Today we're jumping into Psycho 1960 starring Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee. Looking forward to jumping into this Alfred Hitchcock classic because it's something I haven't sat down and watched before. But before we jump into it, let's jump into a summary of the film and see what it's all about. Psycho is a 1960 American horror film produced and directed by Alfred Hitchcock. The screenplay written by Joseph Stefano was based on the 1959 novel of the same name by Robert Block. The film stars Anthony Perkins, Janet Lee, Vera Miles, John Gavin, and Martin Balsam. The plot centers on an encounter between on-the-run embezzler Marion Crane, played by Lee, and shy motel proprietor Norman Bates, played by Perkins, in its aftermath in which a private investigator, played by Balsam, Marion's lover Sam Loomis, played by Gavin, and her sister Lila, played by Miles, investigate her disappearance. Psycho was seen as a departure from Hitchcock's previous film North by Northwest as it was filmed on a small budget in black and white by the crew of his television series Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Initially, the film divided critique due to its controversial subject matter, but audience interest and outstanding box office returns prompted a major critical re-evaluation. Psycho was nominated for four Academy Awards including Best Director for Alfred Hitchcock and Best Supporting Actress for Janet Lee. Psycho is now considered one of Hitchcock's best films and is arguably his most famous and influential work. It has been hailed as a major work of cinematic art by international film critics and scholars who praise its slick direction, tense atmosphere, impressive camera work, memorable score, and iconic performances. Often ranked among the greatest films of all time, it set a new level of acceptability for violence, deviant behavior, and sexuality in American films. It has been considered to be one of the most earliest examples of the slasher film genre. After Hitchcock's death in 1980, Universal Pictures produced follow-up three sequels, a remake, a made-for-television spinoff, and a television series. In 1992, the Library of Congress deemed the film culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant, and selected it for preservation in the United States National Film Registry. With all that being said, let's jump into the movie and see what we're getting into. Very dramatic music. Very iconic score. I mean, of course I've heard the score. A little trivia about Psycho. When the cast and crew began work on the first day, they had to raise their hands and swear on an oath not to divulge one word of the story. Alfred Hitchcock also withheld the ending part of the script from his cast until he needed to shoot it. Things we do to keep secrets. Dolly around, let's see the town. Phoenix, Arizona. Friday, December the 11th. It was a cold, dreary day. <laughs> Zooming in. 2.43 p.m. I better get back to the office. These extended lunch hours give my boss excess acid. Why don't you call your boss and tell him you're taking the rest of the afternoon off? Good idea. Well, you could laze around here a while longer. Sounds fun. Checking out time is 3 p.m. 3 p.m.? It's like 11 now. When you're married, you can do a lot of things deliberately. You sure talk like a girl who's been married. Meeting you in secret, so we can be secretive. We steal lunch hours. So they're cheating on spouses? Write each other lurid love letters. Oh, I have to go, Sam. I can come down next week. No. Oh, we can see each other. We can even have dinner. My sister helping me broil a big steak for three. Did we send sister to the movies, turn mama's picture to the wall? Sam. All right. We'll be legit. I want to see you. And under any circumstances, even respectability. It requires patience, temperance, a lot of sweating out. I'm tired of sweating for people who aren't there. I sweat to pay my ex-wife alimony and she's living on the other side of the world somewhere. I haven't even been married once yet. Yeah. When you do, you'll swing. Oh, Sam, let's get married. Yes. Did you say yes? Live with me in a storeroom behind a hardware store in Fairvale. Sure. When I send my ex-wife for alimony, you can lick the stamps. I'll lick the stamps. I'll do anything for you. Find yourself somebody available. I'm thinking of it. I'm late, and uh, you have to put your shoes on. See ya. Is Mr. Lowry back from lunch? He's lunching with a man who's buying the Harris Street property. You know the oil lease man? That's why he's late. Never say that when I'm going out for lunch. I'm lunching with somebody later. Lunching. So proper. 
Oh, your sister called to say she's going to Tucson to do some buying, and she'll be gone the whole weekend. Hey, you girls ought to get your boss to air condition you up. Uh, tomorrow's the day, my sweet little girl. Oh, oh, not, not you. <laughs> You're not sweet. 18 years old, and she never had an unhappy day in any one of those years. You know what I do about unhappiness? I buy it off. Are, uh, are you unhappy? Yeah. I'm buying this house for my baby's wedding present. $40,000 cash. Hey. I never carry more than I can afford to lose. Cash transaction of this size is most irregular. Ah, so what? Suppose we put it in the safe and then... Where's that bottle you said was in your desk? It's on my desk. <laughs> Sometimes I can keep my mouth shut. Lowry, I am dying of thirst -a -roni. I don't even want it in the office over the weekend. Put it in the safe deposit box in the bank and... He was flirting with you. I guess he must have noticed my wedding ring. The copies. Uh, Mr. Lowry, if you don't mind, I'd like to go right on home after the bank. Do you feel ill? Well, just a headache. Yeah. I'm going to spend this weekend in bed. Thank you. It's fun. I like bed. Bed, TV, watch movies. Can't buy off unhappiness with pills. <sighs> I guess I'll go put this money in the bank. I don't think you are. Thank your line. She definitely likes walking around on a bra. Money, she stole it. You know, forty grand in nineteen sixties equivalent in purchasing power is to about four hundred and twenty five thousand four hundred dollars today. It's quite a bit. Decisions, decisions. Oh, she's going through with it. Marion, what in the world? Of course I'm glad to see you. I always am. What is it, Marion? Hey. <laughs> Does he know you? It's a weird look. Just feeling guilty, as if that guy knew something. <laughs> uh oh, let's just pull over for a nap. Kappa? What? <laughs> Morning. In quite a hurry. I didn't intend to sleep so long. Slept here all night? Yes. As I said, I couldn't keep my eyes open. There are plenty of motels in this area. I didn't intend to sleep all night. Have I broken any laws? No, ma'am. Then I'm free to go. Yep. Is anything wrong? No. Let me go. Am I acting as if there's something wrong? Frankly, yes. Well, is there? No. I've told you there's nothing wrong. Now, just a moment. Turn your motor off, please. Damn. May I see your license? If I hadn't broken any laws, though, pure legal right to refuse. No laws were broken. What now? Can I go? Yeah, there was a no. See you later. <laughs> Just got in the car and left. Cup's still following. Is he gonna turn left? Nope. Still behind her. Keep your cool. Cop's leaving. Thank God. What's she gonna do? Sell her car, get another one, hide her tracks. Here within a second. It's been a second. It's a nice case for newspapers. Guys really paying attention. Didn't realize that she was being followed. I'm in no mood for trouble. What? I'm saying the first customer of the day is always the most trouble. <laughs> it's salesman pitch. Well, why don't you have a look around here and see if there's something to strike your eyes. Meanwhile, I'll have my mechanic give you the once over. You want some coffee? I was just about no, to. No, thank you. One thing people never ought to be when they're buying used cars, and that's in a hurry. Why is that cop following me? That's the one I'd have picked for you myself. How much would it be with my car? First time the customer ever high pressured the salesman. Your car plus $700. Eh, you always got time to argue money, huh? All right. She just said five. I take it you can prove that car is yours. And I you're... believe I have the necessary papers. What to do, what to do? Was there any tax on that $700? Might as well be perfectly honest with you, ma'am. It's not that I don't trust you, but... Is there anything so terribly wrong about making a decision and wanting to hurry? Do you think I've stolen my car? All right, let's go inside. Okay. Is he leaving? Nope, he's pulling in. See ya. Hey! Just 
put it in here, please. Thanks. Well, that cop is bloodhound. I better have a look at those papers, Charlie. The only funny thing, she paid me seven hundred dollars in cash. Why is that funny? I thought people used cash back then more often than now. Yes, Mr. Lowry. Buzz me the minute she comes in. No one's asked me at the house. I called her sister, and she doesn't know where Marion is any more than we do. Her sister's going to do that. She's as worried as we are. Uh. As I said, I last saw your sister when she left this office on Friday. I did see her sometime later, driving. Get Mr. Cassidy for me. Cat's out of the bag. Girl works for you for ten years. You trust her. Well, I ain't about to kiss off forty thousand dollars. I'll track her. Never you doubt it. Oh, hold on, Cass. It must be some kind of a mystery. I, I can't plan and, and and even flirting with me. <laughs> it's not quite true. It's a hard range. You should probably pull over. Maybe stop at a motel. The Bates Motel. Do you like how they're shooting all this? It's only like two shots that they're intercutting together. Hello? They're coming, they're coming. Gee, I'm sorry I didn't hear you in all this rain. Go ahead in, please. 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. They, uh, they moved away the highway. Oh, I thought I'd gotten off the main road. I knew you must have. Nobody ever stops here anymore unless they've done that. <laughs> There's no sense dwelling on our losses. Mary Samuels. Decisions, decisions. Cabin one. It's closer in case you want anything. Right next to the office. I'll get your bags. There's hangers in the closet and stationery with Bates Motel printed on it in case you want to make your friends back home feel envious. <laughs> Over there. The bathroom. Yeah, if you want anything, just just tap on the wall. I'll, I'll be in the office. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bates. Nice to meet you. Would you have dinner with me? I was just about to what? myself. Sandwiches and milk, but I'd like it very much if you'd come up to the house. I don't set a fancy table, but the kitchen's awful homey. I'd like to. And I'll be back as soon as it's ready. Okay. Look at that. Seems like a nice fella. No, not there. Maybe in this drawer. Yeah. No. Back on the suitcase. Perfect. No one will expect a thing. No, I won't have you bringing strange young girls in for supper. Man, she's loud. Mother, please. Son, or do I have to tell her because you don't have the gut? Jeez. Shut up, shut up. Caused you some trouble. My mother, uh, what is the phrase? She isn't qu quite herself today. I really don't have that much of an appetite. Well, you better. I just freaking made sandwiches. I wish you could apologize for other people. As long as you fixed a supper, we may as well eat it. But I know. Come on. It, it might be uh, nicer in the office. What a gentleman. No room with a bed. I, I have the parlor back here. All right. Spooky place. Or if the bird is the reference to the birds. You're very kind. Maybe not. Birds came out in 1963. You, you eat like a bird. And you'd know, of course. <laughs> I hear the expression "eats like a bird." It is really a fault. Birds really eat a tremendous lot. Now, I don't really know anything about birds. My hobby is stuffing things. Blue. Just rather stuff birds because I hate the look of beasts when they're stuffed. Some some people even stuff dogs and cats, but I think only birds look well stuffed because kind of passive to begin with. And it's uh, it's not as expensive as you'd think. It's cheap, really. The chemicals are the only thing that, that, that cost anything. Hmm. I don't know stuffing dead things, though. A hobby's supposed to pass the time, not fill it. Is your time so empty? No. Well, I, I run the office. Errands for my mother. One she allows I might be capable of doing. Do you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. <laughs> oh, that. Eh. You've never had an empty moment in your entire life, have you? Only my share. Where are you going? Any destination in mind? Looking for a private island. What are you running away from? Why do you ask that? 
people never run away from anything. I think that we're all in our private traps, and none of us can ever get out. It makes sense. Sometimes we deliberately step into those traps. I was born in mine. I don't mind it anymore. You should mind it. Oh, I do. <laughs> but I say I don't. If anyone ever talked to me the way I heard, the way she spoke to you... Let off. Sometimes, when she talks to me like that, I feel I'd like to go up there and curse her and, and, and leave her forever. But I know I can't. She had to raise me all by herself after my father died. A few years ago, Mother met this man. He talked her into building this motel. He could have talked her into anything. When he died, too, it was just too great a shock for her. And the way he died... How'd he die? I guess there's nothing to talk about while you're eating. It was just too great a loss for her. She had nothing left. Except you. Yeah, shucks. Why don't you go away? To a private island like you? Sure. I couldn't do that. Who'd look after her? You'd be alone up there. It'd be cold and damp like a grave. If you love someone, you don't do that to them even if you hate them. I don't hate her. I hate what she's become. I hate the illness. Wouldn't it be better if you put her someplace... Like a home? A madhouse? No. People always call a madhouse someplace. Put her in someplace. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to sound uncaring. Man, this choice went south quick. The laughing and the tears. The cruel eyes studying you. Audie? Could have just been assisted living facility or something. She's as harmless as one of those stuffed birds. People always mean well. They cluck their thick tongues and shake their heads and suggest oh so very delicately. Man, tone it down, bro. I've suggested it myself, but I hate to even think about it. She just goes a little mad sometimes. Oh, no. Yeah. We all go a little mad sometimes. Right? I'm agreeing with a psycho. <laughs> sometimes, just one time can be enough. You're not going back to your room already. And I'll have a long drive tomorrow, all the way back to Phoenix. Oh, I'll put things back. I stepped into a private trap back there, and I'd like to go back and try to pull myself out of it. Are you sure you wouldn't like to stay just a little while longer? Just for talk? Well, I'll see you in the morning. I'll bring you some breakfast, all right? All right, Miss... Uh... Crane. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the mass murderer kill you. Cool shot. Sell whatever the house. It's funny, like, I was watching The Hills Have Eyes in our last movie, and it was very quiet, not a lot of music. And this movie is complete opposite. Not really a silent moment. A lot of music. A lot of tension building with that music. Time for the shower. We all know what happens in the shower scene. Great water pressure. This is horrible. Mother. Uh oh. She is dead. Everything she went through, the entire first part of the movie, just doesn't matter anymore now. Dead. Still a pretty effective scene. I mean, just a horrible way to go. I still kind of moving. All that money. Mother, oh God, mother, blood, blood. Your mother's a bitch. <laughs> Dead. So what now? Just gonna cover it up. That's what you gotta do first. Get them up. They're definitely doing a good job keeping her out of sight. More than likely they didn't use Janet Lee for this. All that chocolate syrup. It's what it is. Guess she didn't know. It's 
Spending a lot of time watching him clean a bathroom. What a nice spacious trunk. Big enough for a few bodies. They're definitely showing a lot in the cover up, him just cleaning up the room. It's fine, but just the way it's going, it's kind of slowing down the movie a little bit to me. Uh oh, car. Well, slung. All right, where to? All right, disappearing the car and everything into a swamp. Hopefully, it doesn't get stuck. <laughs> Sink. There we go. Or if that cop is just to come back into play at some point. You better hope it goes all the way down. Uh oh. That's not good. Oh, there we go. Must have been air pocket. Can you still see it during the day though? Like when it comes light, can you still see it in the water? Sam, lady wants to see you. Yes, miss. I'm Marion's sister. Something wrong? She disappeared. Left home on Friday. I was in Tucson. Not even a phone call. Run out and get yourself some lunch, will you? That's okay, Sam. I brought it with me. <laughs> yeah, I got a clue, man. Now, what thing could we be in together? Is Marion in trouble? Yeah, she's dead. Let's all talk about Marion, shall we? Who are you, friend? My name is Arbogast, friend. Private investigator. What's your interest in this? $40,000. What about it? Well, one of you better tell me what's going on and tell me fast. I can take just so much of this now, nonsense. Take it easy, friend. Your girlfriend stole $40,000. She was supposed to bank it on Friday for her boss. And no one has seen her since. Someone always sees a girl with $40,000. Yeah, cop. Miss Crank, can I ask you a question? I'm up here on just a hunch and nothing more. A little checking I could get to believe you. I don't care if you believe me or not. Hospitals? Maybe she had an accident. Or a holdup. Well... You know, we're always quickest to doubt people who have a reputation for being honest. She's not back there with the nuts and bolts, but she's here in this town. She's not. Sorry. You're a horrible uh, private investigator, my friend. Horrible. Don't even deserve to be a private eye. Good evening. Good evening. I almost drove right past. I'm always forgetting to turn the sign on, but we do have a vacancy. Twelve, in fact. Twelve cabins, twelve vacancies. <laughs> Uses that with everybody. You know, this is the first place it looks like it's hiding from the world. See, that used to be the main highway right there. You, uh, you out to buy a motel? No. The reason I asked, you said you'd seen so many in the past couple of days, I thought maybe you, uh, what was it you wanted to ask? My name's Arbogast. I'm a private investigator. I trace a girl that's been missing for, oh, about a week now from Phoenix. Mm. We have reason to believe that she came along this way, may have stopped in the area. Well, no one stopped here for a couple of weeks. Well, she may have used an alias. Well, I'll tell you, I don't even, even much bother with uh, guests registering anymore. You know, one by one, you drop the formality. Old habits die hard. The couple last weeks out of this. Yeah, you see, that's exactly my point. I said that nobody had been here for a couple of weeks, and there's a couple came by and registered under another name. Do you mind if I look at your sample of her handwriting? Well, uh... Here we are. Marie Samuels. Is that her? Yeah. 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 Samuels. Her boyfriend's name is Sam. Oh, uh, yeah. Was she in disguise, by any chance? You want to check the picture again? Look, I, I wasn't lying to you, mister. Oh, Did I you? know that. I know you wouldn't lie. You know, it's tough keeping track of the time around. Oh, I know, I know. No. Uh -oh. Well, it, it was raining, and um, it's not really a very good picture, either. Really. No, I guess not. She arrived uh, rather late one night, and she went straight to sleep and uh, left early the next morning. Oh, very early. The, 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 the next morning, Sunday. I see. Uh, did anyone meet her here? No. Any phone calls or no. locally? No. How would you know that she didn't make any phone calls? I guess the phone bill. Oh, well, she was very tired and... Uh, that's right, that's right. Take the time. Um, she was sitting back there. No, no, she was standing back there with a sandwich in her hand. A long dr drive. Uh, back where? Back uh, where she came from. No, he... She was very hungry and I made her a sandwich right, right to bed. Uh, how did she pay you? Check. Cash. Cash. And uh, after she left, she uh, didn't come back. You seem kind of suspicious there, Norman. <laughs> I've got some work to do, if you don't mind. I do mind. You see, if it doesn't gel, it isn't aspect coming together. Something's missing. Like you're killing her. Listen, if you don't believe me, come on. Come on with me. You can help me change beds, okay? Oh, t oh. <laughs> oh, thanks. Didn't want to go into that room first. Man, you're just making it so suspicious. Hey, here's Mother. Uh-oh, change your mind? 
I think I must have one of those faces you just can't help believing. Is anyone at home? No. Oh, that, that, uh, that must be my mother. She's, she's an, an invalid, and it's practically like living alone. Uh, girl, Marion Crane were here. You wouldn't be hiding her, would you? You wouldn't be made a fool of, would you? But I'm not a fool. Well, this is not a slur on your manhood. I'm uh, sorry. Let's put it this way. She might have fooled me. Well, then your mother met her. Could I, could I talk to your mother? No, as I told you, she's, she's confined. I think I've talked to you all I want to. Yes, but so just for... Th I think it'd be much better if you left now. Thanks. You sure would save me a lot of legwork if you let me talk to her. If I, would I need a warrant for that, too? See you later. We'll be back. Oh, hello, Loomis. This is Arbogast. Is uh, Lila there? Good, let me talk to her, please. Hello, Lila. Marion was up here. Yeah, she spent last Saturday night at the Bates Motel. It's right out here on the old highway. This young fellow that uh, runs the place said that she just spent the night. Well, I did question him, believe me, but uh, I think I got all there was to get. I tell you, I don't feel like entirely satisfied. Uh, no. No, unfortunately, he wouldn't let me see her. I think I'll go back to the motel first. No, you stay there with Loomis. I'll be back in about an hour. Uh, I think our friend uh, Sam Loomis didn't know that Marion was here. All right, see you in about an hour. Okay, see ya. Barking at the wrong tree, bro. Uh oh, open safe. Don't snoop. He's snooping. You never snoop in a killer's house. You just never do it. Aren't you kind of breaking the law there, buddy? Uh oh. Whoa! That's an interesting shot. Dead. Shouldn't have went in that house. Sam, he said an hour or less. Then three. Well, are we just going to sit here and wait? He'll be back. Let's sit still and hang on. I was trying to figure out where that private investigator I've seen him from. It was actually in the Twilight Zone. He was in the 16mm Shrine, season one. Played the, I think, like the best friend of the lady in that episode. Yes. Yes. Patience doesn't run in my family, Sam. I'm going out there. Oh, God, guess, yeah. An hour or less. You'll never find it. I'll stay here. One of us has to be here in case he's on the way. Your sister's dead. Sorry to say. Arbogast! Sorry, he's not here. It's like, damn, someone else I have to kill. No Arbogast, no Bates. Only the old lady at home. Where could he have gone? Sam, he called when he had nothing, nothing. Our deputy sheriff around here. All right, let me get my coat. Well, we got a call from this detective saying that he traced her to that motel out on the old highway. That must be the Bates. Yeah. He traced her there and called us to say he was going to question Mrs. Bates, his mother. What? Mother? How'd you and this detective come to trace her to Fairvale? She's not missing so much as she's run away. From what? She stole money. Stole some money. A lot. Yeah. And the police have been able to... Everyone concerned thought you get her to give the money back. Explains the private detective. He traced her to the Bates place. Well, he said that Marion was there, and he was supposed to come back here and talk to us after he talked to the mother, and he didn't. That's what I want you to do something about. Like what? Find him? <laughs> Sorry if I seem over-anxious. It's just that I'm sure there's something wrong out there, and I have to know what. He wasn't out when you were there. He just wasn't answering the door in the dead of night like some people do. You must remember that bad business out there about... Bad business. What bad business? The sheriff wants you to connect him with the Bates Motel. Uh, Norman, Sheriff Chambers. I've been just fine, thanks. Uh, have you uh, had a fellow stop by there tonight? Private detective, name of Arbogast. Yeah, and after he left, no, oh, that's that's okay, Norman. This detective was there. Norman told him about the girl. And he didn't come back. Didn't see the mother. Norman Bates's mother has been dead and buried in Green Lawn Cemetery for the past. What? Five years. I hope Norman pick out the dress she was buried in. It ain't only local history, Sam. It's the only case of murder and suicide on Fairvale Ledger. Huh. Mrs. Bates poisoned this guy she was involved with when she found out he was married. Strict nine. Wow. Norman found them dead together. In bed. It's a good place to be to die, I guess. You mean that old woman I saw sitting in the window out there wasn't Bates' mother? Called and pounded, but she just ignored me. Saw so Norman Bates' mother. But it had to be. Because Arbogast said so too. And the young man wouldn't let him see her. 
because she was too ill. Who's that woman buried out in Green Lawn Cemetery? This is a very simple movie in terms of the way they made the movie, the story and everything. I mean, there's not hardly any violence going on other than that shower scene and the stairway scene. But besides that, they're very quick. You don't see any blood, guts, and gore. And the blood you do see, it's very minimal. I am sorry, boy, but you do manage to look ludicrous when you give me orders. I will not hide in the fruit cellar. You think I'm fruity, huh? This is my room and no one will drag me out of it. Just for a few days, in that dark, dank fruit cellar. No! Now get out! Don't you touch me! Don't! Norman! Forcing her. Put me down. Put me down. I can walk. He thought if you didn't mind, we'd drive out to that motel with you. He's already been. Went out for service. He didn't find anything. Nothing. What did he say about my sister? She used a fake name. Saw the register myself. Saw the whole place, as a matter of fact. That boy's alone there. The sooner you drop this in the lap of the law, that's the sooner you stand a chance of your sister being picked up. Doubtful. It's Sunday. Sunday fun day. Well, you want me to drop you at the hotel, or...? Sam, I still won't feel satisfied until I go out there. Neither will I. Come on. Then we're going to search every inch of the place, inside and out. I wonder where Norman Bates does his hermiting. Someone... Under a bridge, the best place to hermit. All right, so I guess for trolls. Suppose you want a room. We don't like the look of that sky. Looks like a bad day coming, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah, for a place that doesn't get a lot of business, he's been getting a lot of business. Wouldn't you kind of question that? My boss is paying for this trip, and it's ninety percent business. I better sign in and get a receipt. Sure. I get your bags. Haven't any. I'll show you the room then. You check in any other place in this country without bags, and you have to pay in advance. Ten dollars. <laughs> Tch. That receipt. Oh yeah. I'll go on ahead. Don't bother yourself. We'll find it. Sam, we have to go into that cabin and search it, no matter what we're afraid of finding or how much it may hurt. You think if something happened, it happened there? Tell. What would you need to get out, to get a new business somewhere else? Forty thousand dollars? No, they're thinking the wrong way. There must You're... be some proof that exists now. Something that proves he got that money away from Marion somehow. Let's start with cabin one. That's where it happened. If he sees us. Oh, should have kept an eye on him, see where he actually is. Cabin one. Bates. Ain't no shower curtain. Sam, huh? look, what the figure has been added to or subtracted from 40,000. But that old woman, whoever she is, she told Arbogast something. You never got to see her. You can't go up there. Why not? I don't like you going to that house alone. I can handle a sick old woman. Wait a minute. Get anything out of the mother. Can you find your way back to town? If you do get anything, don't stop to tell me. Anybody? Coast is clear. Come on. Close the door real quick. Should be good. You looking for me? Wife's taking a nap, and I never can keep quiet enough for us. You satisfied with your cabin? Oh, it's fine. All right. I like how these people just stroll on into the houses, you know? Oh, doors open. Must be a safe neighborhood. Don't leave the door open. Raised in a barn. I thought it was the people who were alone most of the time who did all the talking when they got the chance. You are doing all the listening. You are alone here, aren't you? you drive me crazy. What I meant was, uh, I'd do just about anything to get away. He's content. <laughs> Doesn't need much. Well, this is a well-kept bed area. Bedroom. Whatever. No one ever washes their hands, or are they always put new soap out? It's a casting. <gasps> How is a mirror? Someone's laid here. I'm not saying you shouldn't be contented here. I'm just doubting that you are. This place happens to be my only world. I grew up in that house up there. I had a very happy childhood. My mother and I were more than happy. Anything behind door number two? You look frightened. Have I been saying something frightening? I don't know what you've been saying. You're looking nervous, man. Why don't you just get in your car and drive away from here, okay? Shut up! A lot of it. Forty thousand dollars. I bet your mother knows where the money is and what you did to get it. Maybe. I think she'll tell us. Where's that girl you came here with? Where is she? Uh-oh. 
Ow! It's no good. Here comes Norman. Better find a place to hide. Hurry, front door, run! Uh oh. Mother. Mrs. Bates. Used to be. She's a skeleton. Oh, great. Let Norman know where you're at. <laughs> Guy's crazy. Well, if anyone gets any answers, it'll be the psychiatrist. Did he talk to you? No. I got the whole story, not from Norman. I got it from his mother. Ruth. Norman Bates no longer exists. He only half existed to begin with. The other half has taken over. Split personalities. A psychiatrist doesn't lay the groundwork. But my sister is... She's dead. I'm sorry. The private investigator, too. Uh, have you any unsolved missing persons cases on you? Quite a few, actually. Did he confess to... Like I said, the mother... From the mother half of Norman's mind. You have to go back 10 years to the time when Norman murdered his mother. What? Now, he was already dangerously disturbed. Had been ever since his father died. He stole her corpse. A weighted coffin was buried. He hid the body in the fruits. She was there, but she was a corpse. So he began to think and speak for her. If he felt a strong attraction to any other woman, the mother's side of him would go wild. When he met your sister, that set off the jealous mother, and mother killed the girl. And like a dutiful son, Covered up all traces of the crime he was convinced his mother had committed. He was simply doing everything possible to keep alive the illusion of his mother being alive. So it's crazy is what you're saying. Now that's what I meant when I said I got the story from the mother. In Norman's case, the battle is over and the dominant personality has won. And the $40,000? The swamp. These were crimes of passion, not profit. It's sad. When a mother has to speak the words that condemn her own son, they'll put him away now, as I should have, years ago. And in the end, he intended to tell them I killed those girls. Oh, they know I can't even move a finger, and I won't. They're probably watching me. Let them see what kind of a person I am. I'm not even gonna swat that fly. They'll see and they'll know, and they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. <laughs> There's the sister's body. The end. Well, that was Psycho 1960. Enjoyable movie. I really liked it from beginning to end. I, you know, kind of knew what was going to happen throughout the entire movie because I have heard about Psycho my entire life. Very much part of the pop culture echelon of movies when it comes to Alfred Hitchcock. I think it's probably his most memorable of all the movies that he has done. You know, probably The Birds is up there as long as well as... Uh, North by Northwest. I mean, he's done quite a few movies uh, from different genres. It seems like suspense is where his realm is typically at. Did a very good job with uh, building up suspense with the music and making it seem like Janet Lee was the main character at the very beginning of this movie until she's killed. You know, like everything building up to the part where she gets killed, it just made everything go out the window when suddenly her problems were no longer a thing in the movie. It was all about Norman and him covering up the murder as well as all the other things that he's done in the past. And, you know, very sad uh, the way Norman went out, but I understand there's three other sequels to the movie. Uh, I think in 1980, after the movie, uh, after Alfred Hitchcock passed away, they ended up, uh, I guess, getting the rights to where they can make sequels. And they definitely brought back Anthony, Herpkin, uh, Anthony Perkins and uh, definitely kept moving forward with the story. Uh, I think I did maybe see a little bit of the fourth one, um, but I didn't really see the other ones. Never, you know, of course, I have to see the first one before I start going forward with it. But I don't know if I'll revisit those. I don't know if I'll visit those movies. Maybe not for the channel anyways. Maybe down the line, I'll watch it at some point in my private time. But so uh, when it came to Psycho, really good film. And I can understand why this is like the grandfather of all slasher movies. It really did set the tone what a slasher movie should be. But let's dive into some trivia and see what it took to get this movie off the ground. 
Director Sir Alfred Hitchcock bought the rights to the novel anonymously from Robert Blot for only $9,000. He bought up as many copies as he could in order to keep the ending as secret. The Bates House, though, moved from its original location, still resides on Universal's lot. The motel has been replicated. It is a regular stop on the Universal Studios tram tour. Walt Disney refused to allow Sir Alfred Hitchcock to film at Disneyland in the early 1960s because Hitchcock had made that disgusting movie Psycho. <laughs> Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee said that they did not mind being stereotyped forever because of their participation in this movie. They said in interviews they would rather be stereotyped and be remembered forever for this classic movie and not be remembered at all. Good point. The reason Sir Alfred Hitchcock cameos so early in the movie was because he knew people would be looking out for him as he didn't want to divert their attention away from the plot. For a shot looking up into the water stream of the shower head, Sir Alfred Hitchcock had a six foot diameter shower head made up and blocked the central jet so that the water sprang in a cone past the camera lens without any water spraying directly at it. The score composed by Bernard Herrmann is played entirely by stringed instruments. Janet Lee received threatening letters after this movie's release detailing what they would like to do to Marion Crane. One was so grotesque she passed it on to the FBI. The culprits were discovered and the FBI said she should notify them again if she ever received any more letters. Sir Alfred Hitchcock used Bosco chocolate syrup instead of blood because it showed up better on camera. Well, that's it for Psycho. Tune in next time for another fun-filled movie reaction and commentary on that specific movie. And until then, see you later.